This is Actualize Freedom. Straight talk on growing clicks and conversions on Amazon FBA from people doing it every day. Now here's your host, digital marketing acrobat, Danny Kenji Carlson. What's up, guys? Danny Carlson here with the Actualize Freedom Podcast. And today we have on John Lee from PicFu. And this is going to be a very interesting one because we don't have a lot of people talking about the um, optimizing the Amazon listings and trying to figure out different ways to make it more appealing once it's already up and even before it's already up. So um, he's also been an entrepreneur for 12 years. So very uh, interesting entrepreneurial story to jump into there. Maybe that's a good place to start. Um, what was what was your first couple of businesses that you started or was PickFu the first business that you started 12 years ago? No, PickFu was definitely not the first business. So the first business that my co-founder and I started was a site called Menuism. Um, at that time, this was in 06, uh, my founder and I were, we had been working at large tech companies for a while and we had always decided we wanted to do something. So one day we just decided we, uh, we got together and decided we wanted to jump ship and try it out. Menuism was a, uh, and still is actually, it's still up and running. It's a restaurant menu aggregator. We, um, we always liked food, always liked dining out, wanted to digitize restaurant menus and thought that that would be an interesting business. So we built up a very large directory of restaurant menus, put that up on online, uh, monetized it with advertising. Um, that was a very interesting journey. Um, but we decided that it was not a job for um, SEO and advertising was not a great long-term game. Um, and so we decided we wanted to eventually build more products that were um, more customer focused, basically, rather than relying on monetizing with ads. So that's why, that's why we pivoted to a bunch of other businesses and eventually to PickFu. Yeah. And so I'm sure there were some big failures along the way. Can you give us an example of yep. one of your, um, looking back on it, proud failures that uh, maybe was one of your defining moments as an entrepreneur? Yeah, sure. So um, we, we created a site called The Wedding Lens. Um, that uh, Most of the time, the projects that we built were always about scratching our own itch, trying to solve a problem that we had. So The Wedding Lens, this was back in 08, my uh, co-founder Justin had just gotten married and we did not have a great place to put all of his wedding photos. So we built up a site that basically allowed people to upload email photos all with group uh, centralized group photo sharing. We actually productized it because it worked really well for his wedding and we decided to keep it targeted for uh, specifically for weddings, not just general group photo sharing, which um, it did pretty well for a while, but we realized that we didn't have the passion for the industry, even though we like we like the software and we like the technical aspects of it. We just didn't have the passion for the for the wedding industry that we was required basically to go in and spend years and years and years to um, build out those relationships. And along the way, uh, smartphones got better and better, and there were other competitors that came into the space and kind of uh, the technology changed out from under us. So those are some pretty good lessons that we learned. Uh, along the way that it's not just about the tech, but it's also about the passion for the business and the market itself. And you take the uh, stance of going with the co-founder every single time, it seems. Hey, is this the same co-founder? And if so, um, why Why are you, um, how have you gone through so many projects together and why are you choosing a co-founder in the first place instead of doing it yourself? So it's been the same co-founder um, for this entire time that I've been an entrepreneur. Uh, his name is Justin. We were buddies from college. We went through projects together. We've always, we had always wanted to do something together. So we knew that it was a risk to try things out initially uh, as co-founders. We knew that that put, uh, you know, we've heard of co-founder horror stories and everything about, you know, it ruining friendships and so on. But, you know, we jumped in, tried it out, seemed to work out. And so we've been going ever since. Excellent. And now you're on to PickFu. So tell me where the idea for this came from, because um, it is obviously successful now, but um, it was a pretty unique software back when I first heard about it, right? So like, how did you guys see the need for this software? Um, was it mostly from Amazon sellers that you got this idea? No, absolutely not. So just like I mentioned before, everything that we've built, we've always built to scratch our own itch. So the need for this software came from our own issues, um, our, like our own problems. Um, so coming from a pretty small team, uh, we had 
especially just working with one other co-founder, we always would have debates about, you know, I, I like this logo, this color, or the page, or this page is designed this way or that way. But being a small team of two, you know, who's the tiebreaker, right? So PicFu was actually a side project that we built uh, almost 10 years ago um, to basically very quickly get feedback from unbiased strangers online. And we built that so that we could help settle debates and get feedback on our own projects. Um, and particularly at that time, we were working on menuism at the time still. So we built it for ourselves. It worked really well. We didn't market it at all, um, but just kind of put it out there, slapped a PayPal button on, didn't touch it for years. Um, people started using it and then we doubled the price. People started using it some more. So eventually, when we were looking for something new to do, we looked back on the side project, side project of ours and said, hey, well, this is getting some traction, so we might as well try to focus our time on this and see where it grows. Um, e-commerce didn't even start, like e-commerce sellers didn't even start using it till probably one or two years ago. So before that, most of our bigger verticals were in uh, with uh, self-publishing authors, using PicFu to test book titles and book covers, and uh, mobile app developers testing their app icons, their app art, and so on. And it's very interesting uh, because obviously it makes a lot of sense for e-commerce brands. Um, what are the main use cases that people are testing on PicFu when it comes to e-commerce and Amazon? Yeah, so um, the main use cases for Amazon sellers and e-commerce sellers are uh, optimizing their product listings so because PicFu comes, we have a panel of about 10,000 US-based customers uh, who give really quick feedback on anything you ask, right? So if you're a seller on Amazon and you want to optimize, try to figure out what the right main product image is, um, you would use PicFu to say, basically do a quick split test and say, which based on the image, which product would you buy? And you put up two images, three images, four images, Four potential images of your main product listing image and then our responders will you can choose your audience so you can target by amazon prime member gender all like a whole bunch of different interests and our respondents will vote not only vote but also give you a written explanation as to why um, so that gives you a lot of insight into figuring out oh well maybe they like this image because of the color this image because of the angle of the product and so on so that really, the written feedback really helps you iterate on taking next steps on your creatives. And so how does that work exactly? You send an email out to the segment of the audience that you're, you're trying to target. Let's say it's Amazon Prime customers, uh, which makes mm -hmm. sense for Amazon sellers. Um, and they're just presented with a web page and they would have to click on the one that they find the most attractive? Yeah. So we... Um... So of our, of our database of about 10,000 panelists, um, we use a couple of different third-party panel services that we've built sort of our own, own interface on top. So when you run a PicFu poll, let's say you're targeting Amazon Prime members who are female who make over 100K. And we would find all the people in our database that match that and basically publish a poll out to them and say, you have this poll that's available. We pay all of our respondents, so it's a first come, first serve. Um, they'll see that a poll is available, they'll come in, and they'll view the poll on PicFu, see your options, answer your question, and then also give a written explanation as to why they chose what they did. Interesting. And so so what exactly is the format? If someone wanted to test an Amazon main image, are the respondents going to be shown a replica of an Amazon search results page? Or what does that look like when the customers have to choose um, the image next to each other? So you can upload um, images, you can, your options can be images, text, uh, video, or audio. Um, most of the time, sellers will just choose, upload the actual main images, like potential main images, like the, so it fills up the entire frame, basically. Some, uh, some sellers will also upload a screenshot of the entire Amazon listing. But at that point, you're basically asking the audience to get feedback on your listing and not so much just the image itself. So for the main use case of testing and trying to choose the best Amazon uh, main image, you're usually uploading the image itself. Yeah, and that's something that I recommend to you, all the people that I work with and my clients is split testing the main image is one of the easiest, lowest hanging fruits to 
increase the performance of your listing, right? If you can increase the, the click-through rate of your listing, then all of that traffic that's coming to the search results page is just more of it is going to your listing than your competitors, which exactly, obviously exactly. is very beneficial. Um, and you brought up something really interesting, which is just the amount of variables that you're testing. If people are uploading a picture of their entire listing, then um, like, what is wrong with that compared to just putting up one image, for example? Um, well, there are just so many variables at play when you're talking about an entire listing versus talking about an image. So um, usually it's the image that's going to motivate people to stop in the Amazon search results and click on your listing versus clicking on a competitor's listing. Once you get to the, once a, a potential buyer gets to your listing, there's probably a, there's probably, you know, a dozen other variables that will compel them to potentially either convert or not convert. It could be your, um, it could be like your, your title, your bullet points, your descriptions, the questions and answers, obviously the reviews. So if you're just going to take a screenshot of the listing, then you may not get a lot and you test an entire screenshot first you may not get the right amount of feedback on the, on the variables that are gonna move the needle for you the most. So usually we recommend that sellers test the main image first, get a good one, and then move on to other parts of the listing to optimize those as well. That certainly makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, I'd agree the main image being the most important one to split test. Um, what would you say would be the second and third most important areas of an Amazon listing to split test? So, um, number one, main image. Number two, I would probably recommend that sellers do a competitive split test. So what I mean by that is not taking, taking a step back from their listing, but actually taking a step back from their listing and stepping, imagining yourself back into the search results. I usually recommend sellers take a screenshot of the search results that their product shows up in and uh, cut out some of the search result panes and actually test those against your competitors. And what that'll tell you on PicFu, if you read, it's, you're not so much looking at which one your the PicFu panelist would choose first, but you're really trying to look at the comments and understand why people click on that search result or this search, search result or this search result. And that will help you understand sort of what is the thing, um, like, whether it's the title, whether it's the description, whether it's the price, whether it's the reviews and the number of reviews and so on that are motivating people within the search results. And that sort of gives you guidance as to which way to test next. Yeah, it certainly makes a lot of sense. And you mentioned um, before the interview too, that a lot of people like to test packaging and logos too, which I wouldn't have thought of, but it makes mm -hmm. a whole lot of sense instead of just going with your own gut feeling on that, actually going with your target demographics feedback. Um, so like, what are, what are some examples of, of branding things that people would be testing using PicFu? Oh yeah. So we're just about to publish a case study basically where, um, a private equity brand, uh, purchased a pet odor neutralizer from, uh, from a small Amazon seller. So it was already doing well, but the branding was boring and the bottle was boring and so on. And, Basically, they spent fifty thousand dollars on a project to rebrand, change the color of the bottle, change the color of the packaging, and so on. And they were using PicFu to try to validate these potential changes along the way instead of just going with their gut, right? Because this is a pretty big investment for them to spend fifty k to rebrand this whole product um, just to replace the listing that was already selling well on Amazon. Um, so they went through a whole bunch of different variations. I think they went through. 20 different designs, tested them on PicFu, and really narrowed down sort of their top two or three, went with the winner, and then they were able to commit their, their 50K project to rebrand, change the bottle and everything. And once they, once they switched the images, switched the branding, switched uh, on that existing listing, then their sales just, um, it was already good, but then it, it went through, I think they added another over a million or $2 million a year in sales basically after uh, going through that branding change. So branding, imaging, all of that is super important. This podcast is brought to you by Kenji ROI, a complete done for you service for your Amazon listing creation and optimization. Everything from product photography, including lifestyle images with a real model, graphic design images and studio images, 
to the copywriting and keyword optimization, to videos, and enhanced brand content if you're lucky enough to have brand registry. We also manage marketing when it comes to Amazon ads. And also, for some bigger sellers out there who might be interested in building a messenger list, we offer services creating the many chat funnels to follow up with customers for more reviews, to help build your own audience so you can launch new products to help rank for new keywords. Um, and there is Facebook ad management built into that as well for the right sellers. So if you want to learn more about Kenji ROI, head to K-E-N-J-I-R-O-I.com. That is actually my middle name, Kenji, with the R-O-I added onto the end. Yeah, I mean, that's the power of finding what works yeah, the best, totally. right? Um, right. And so... I'm interested to hear how you use the same concept split testing within your own business within PickFu, um, because I'm sure that you apply this personally to um, to your own business in, in certain ways. So uh, I'm just curious to hear what you're doing there. Yeah, so we use PickFu to uh, choose the name PickFu way back in the day. We had a bunch of different names that were uh, business names that where domains were available, and so we use we ran PickFu tests to figure out the PickFu name. We used PickFu to choose our logo. Um, we had uh, we used 99 designs to come up with a bunch of logos. We narrowed, uh, my co-founder and I narrowed it down to about eight of them, and then we just ran PickFu polls, read all the read all the comments and everything to figure out which logo we wanted to help us decide which logo we wanted to use. Uh, we use PickFu all the time for graphics that we're designing for blog posts. We use it for blog post titles. Uh, we use it for Facebook ads. So even before we run Facebook ads, we'll test out different Facebook ad titles, uh, combinations of Facebook titles and ad images and stuff uh, to get a better idea of sort of how people would respond to it before committing to those tests. And we've seen a lot of other users uh, use it for testing ads and logos and stuff as well. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense because while you can split test things using Facebook ads, you often have to spend quite a bit of money to see if one's going to perform, yeah. you know, split test yeah. 10 different creatives. That's a lot of money you got to, uh, you got to test, right? Yeah, and also uh, reading the, uh, the fact that our, the panelists are required to write down and explain why, that helps a lot in terms of understanding. You know, you might have an idea of like the certain, a certain ad or a certain email subject line is is saying one thing but a lot of times we'll put up some messaging read the read the comments and we realize oh there's all these other connotations and in, in innuendos that people are mistaking it for that we didn't even realize you know because you know we, we're not in that frame we're not in we're not in that same mindset yeah no that absolutely makes sense um and where do you see where do you see um PickFu going in the future? Is there anything that you guys are working on when it comes to the optimization or are you, um, are you sticking within um, the current um, set of things that you're doing now? No. So we have some big plans uh, down the line. I mean, taking a step back, we kind of see PickFu as um, really accessible consumer, like as a really accessible and fast consumer research platform for anyone and particularly e-com sellers. Um, we've heard from a lot of sellers say like, you know, I never thought that I could run these kinds of tests so quickly and so affordably and, you know, kind of like saying thank you for bringing, uh, making this available to us. And I think that we're going to, we're going to try to expand and sort of keep going down that route of making um, like commercial grade, industrial grade, consumer research, consumer market research available to e-commerce sellers and small businesses, because we've had, um, we've had corporate clients who work at the large companies, like let's say Procter and Gamble and other really large institutions who have these, they all have these really big market research budgets. And their market research tools are super expensive and they take a super long time, but they'll still come and use PickFu because it's faster and it's cheaper and they can really iterate and turn around their on iterate on their decisions really quickly. And so we like that we're able to provide that service and we really hope that we're going to be able to expand that portfolio to expand, to provide more of those consumer research tools fast and quick for uh, small to medium businesses. Yeah. And you know, 
being the owner of an Amazon listing optimization agency, I can definitely vouch for the importance of optimizing these kind of things, right? The way I think about it yeah. is if you are spending a bunch of money to launch your product on a whole bunch of product inventory on Amazon ads, Facebook ads, and all that kind of stuff, you are wasting uh, a percentage you're between two or maybe 15% of that ad spend is going down the toilet if you're not optimizing your listing, uh, your main image, your mm -hmm. the title and all these kind of things, right? If you just set it and yep. forget it, you might just be chucking 15% of your money down the toilet. You're just burning money. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, I mean, I'm a little bit biased, obviously, but uh, I mean, yeah. it's it's hard to argue with that. It's It's something that no matter what kind of strategies you're using, you should be putting some focus on, at least in the beginning, to get that dialed in and make sure that everything else is going to be more effective, right? Um, yeah. And John, you have a coupon for the Actualize Freedom audience here. So that is 50% off the first poll. You guys can use the coupon code Actualize Freedom. Um, mm -hmm. And Actualize is A C T U A L I Z E or Z for you Americans. I'm from Canada. We say it, we say it all <laughs> weird like that. Um, or what is that? Pickfood.com slash actualize freedom. Yeah. Pickfood.com slash actualize freedom. All one word. Yeah. And like I said, guys, this is something that I actually really believe is important and recommend. Um, so if you are launching a new product on Amazon um, or you're considering selling a product and you want to see maybe how it would perform against the page one search results, um, for example, then it might be worth a very small investment to see if that's going to work before you make a very large investment in a new product launch, for example. So totally, um, definitely check that out, at least for the main image split testing or seeing if the new product launch is going to work. Um, mm -hmm. So John, your parting words for an Amazon seller, if they, they haven't done any split tests before and they have an existing listing, maybe they have one or two listings on Amazon already, um, where yeah. should they start when it comes to optimizing the listing? Sure. So generally, uh, usually I recommend if, if sellers already have one or two listings um, and they have a potentially different main image that they're considering to split test the main image for one of those listings. If they feel like there's, their main images are totally dialed in and that their listings are totally dialed in, then what I recommend is that the sellers pick a listing and they start a pick through poll and they just say, um, what questions do you have about this listing? And just put in the URL of their listing and run that poll as is. And what, what the audience on pick through will do is go review your listing and start surfacing questions about your product that are not answered in that listing. So that gives you, um, you know, pick through polls, you can run between 50 to 500 people. So that's going to give you 50 to 500 pieces of information, pieces of um, basically areas for improvement on that listing. Um, now, I'm not going to guarantee that every, you know, every response is going to be is going to be gold, but you're going to get a lot of ideas on what's missing from your existing listings, information you can add about your product that potential customers um, might will probably find valuable when they're considering your listing. Oh, it certainly makes a lot of sense. And guys, the typical Amazon review rate is 4%. So, you know, you can get the same <laughs> feedback, but you uh, you do the math on 4% review rate of how many sales you need to actually get that amount of feedback, right? Right. So yeah, um, definitely exactly. makes sense. And uh, this has been very valuable, John. Where can people reach out to you online if they if they want to uh, touch base or learn more about uh, you? Yeah, so um, anyone can always contact me over email, john at pickfoo.com. Uh, visit the website, pickfu.com. Um, email is usually the easiest way to reach me and happy if, if people still have questions about optimizing their listings, uh, anyone can reach out, happy to take a look at their listings and offer ideas. Awesome, John. Appreciate your time on here. And guys, if you want the show notes, go check that out at actualizefreedom.com. And uh, we'll have the show notes there, including the coupon code uh, Actualize Freedom for 50% off that first poll. And if you haven't already, please go leave a review on iTunes, on Stitcher, wherever you're listening to this podcast. We appreciate every single one. And, um, you know, just make sure it's five stars or else I'm just probably going to cry myself to sleep. Um, and it's going to be really sad. You're going to make all these sad social media posts and uh, you guys are going to feel really bad about it. So make sure nice. it's five stars. And until next time, guys, take care. Thanks, Danny. This podcast is sponsored by the Helium 10 suite of tools, and we at Kenji ROI have been using Helium 10 for more than three years now. 
They have so many tools packed into one, I don't think that there's a better value. Um, and we use it all the time for ourselves and our clients, so we can actually recommend it from real experience. We use their keyword tracker to see how our product launches are doing, the keyword indexing tool to ensure that you're actually showing up for your main keywords. Super, super important step right there. And also Magnet and Cerebro, a really powerful combination for finding keywords your competitors are using or just finding new keywords to put into your listing in general. You should be using this on you know, at least a monthly basis to see if any new keywords are coming up um, because new searches are coming up all the time, guys. Like people are searching on Google um, I forget the number, but a huge percentage of those searches are brand new, never been done searches. So if you guys want a discount code, you can use 50 Kenji ROI for 50% off your first month of Helium 10 or 10 Kenji ROI for 10% off for life. So that's a pretty good discount. You might as well. Um, we use them and recommend them for years. So if you guys need that, you guys will definitely get good value out of Helium 10. For show notes and resources mentioned in this episode, visit KenjiROI.com.